on Friday 1st April at 2 p.m. Olenya's body will arrive at Entebbe International Airport aboard Ethiopian Airlines. The casket will be received with the full honors. A few leaders and family members will be allowed at this ceremony. On 3rd and 4th April, Olenya's body will be at his home in Muyenga, Kampala. Friends and well-wishers will pay their last respects. There will be a small service conducted and attended by a few people on Sunday. The program shows that on Tuesday at 9 a.m., Olanya's body will be at Parliament, where he will lie in state. Legislators will pay their final respects to the man who was the Deputy Speaker for 10 years before he became Speaker last year. The state funeral will be held at Kololo Ceremonial Grounds on Wednesday 6th April starting at 9 a.m. Only 1,500 people have been invited to attend the state funeral at Kololo Celebration Grounds, and these will include the executive, members of the judiciary, members of parliament, foreign dignitaries, family members, cultural leaders from the Acholisa region, heads of departments and agencies, and all those people have not been invited, been told, to stay away. The Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, His Grace Dr. Kazimba Mugalu, will be the main celebrant. At 3 p.m., the casket will be airlifted to Omoro, La Lodge village, the speaker's ancestral home, where it will be received by the family and actually leaders. The burial ceremony will be on 8th April, which will be observed as a public holiday. The budget for the burial of Olanya, for which the Ministry of Finance has requested 1.8 billion shillings, has raised debate on social media, with some saying the government is spending too much money. Members of the public need to know that the Speaker of Parliament is third in rank in the country's leadership and he deserved such a befitting burial, which anyway is legally provided for. Therefore, I would draw your attention to the burial activities planned for and agreed upon rather than to dwell on discussing the budgets. Olanya died on 20th March at a hospital in Seattle, U.S., where he had been admitted over a month. Sudil Biarhanga, NTV.